moving of the changes from one org to another org basically comes into code migration why we call it as code migration because all the changes that we do in this organization be it customization or configuration all right so this would be saved as a metadata in salesforce if you ask me why they are doing it why they are basically saving it it in a form of a metadata so be it org 1 org 2 i have a workflow rule that i have configured in org 1 all right now if i want to move that change to org 2 all right so why we do it will i'll get to that point for time being i'm just helping you understand the need of code migration so when i have to move this changes to another org if there is no kind of a support from salesforce i have to again start configuring this workflow rule from scratch it would be a manual process that would be there and because of that manual process there are chances that there could be a introduction of a human errors right so i think that i already know how to configure this workflow rule i might not look at the conditions and i go ahead and do it i might miss out one or two conditions which might introduce human human errors here right so that is where salesforce came up with the concept called code migration where they are allowing us or they are giving us a capability of moving the changes from one or one or to another org. so that is code migration so the need of code migration basically goes like this we have the live environments when i say live environments we have production environment all right or we call it as a live environment in production environment is an environment where we have real time customers real time agents real, real time opportunities real time data be, be it whatever it is speed data be it cases that we create everything is a real information in production environment in production environment it is something that let's say if, if i take an example of an abc company if they have an salesforce application they have an application that has been built right which is exposed to the end users in the form of live environment so real time people would be working there all right now being a developer or an admin if i have to make a change in production if that change is not tested properly so i'm not talking about a list view that we can create list view is something that we can play around in production also there is no there it would not be a kind of a major change let's say if i am talking about a validation rule if i talk about a workflow rule if i talk about process so if i am doing such changes in production validation rule something that is costly the reason being it stops somebody from entering a data that data could be crucial for the business it could be a business deal or an opportunity that they are signing off if such validation rules are stopping an information for some uh, small bug that has been introduced it would be a huge loss for the business right for this abc company when they have this application if they are not basically having an opportunity to save that information it would be a huge loss for them same goes with the workflow rule if it has to send an email out if it has to basically update a field if that is not happening this live environment the people who are using this live environment or the production environment if they are expecting that to happen if that is not happening there could be a chance of lose of data or the person who is basically dealing with the customer might not have the information handy so that he can talk to the customer same goes with the process builders also so that is why any change that we do in production should be tested properly and it should be properly demoed to the clients or the people who are using this organization this application so that when it goes live they know what to do with that particular functionality so that is why any development that we do is not been done in your production be it any small change or a large change it has to follow the development cycle if you ask me what is the development cycle initially we start with the initially the requirement comes in the developer takes that requirement and he would configure those he would configure or customize that change according to the requirement right so the developer would basically start doing it then once he has done with that one he'll unit test it unit testing is something that he'll check if the functionality is working fine or not if that is fine then he'll move on to the next thing which is nothing but he'll move those changes to the qa they would do the testing to see if everything is working fine as as per the requirement that is given if that is fine they'll move these changes to the kind of an environment where they can give a uh, training to the client as a kind of a demo demo slash training to the apc people who are basically expecting this requirement 
they'll give that. Once that is done, they'll do that regression in UIT. Regression is something that a change from me, a change from you, if it has been tested properly, like if, if this has been tested in QA, if this is working fine, the change to that you have done, configuration slash customization, be it whatever it is, that is also working fine. But this regression is something that one plus two, basically they'll test everything to see if everything is working fine. The introduction of a new change, is it breaking an existing functionality or is it basically not doing it, right? If it is breaking, they would basically send these changes back to the developer, developer would fix it and they'll follow the same path. Once everything is fine, they would release those changes to production, right? So some companies would have some more extra steps here, but basically this is the development flow. Right, from dev till the production. Any change that we wanted to do, which includes some kind of a impact on the business, it has to go through this development process or development flow to reach till production. That is where the point of sandboxes comes into picture. Now, I have a production, right? I have a production, I cannot make a change there. So that is where I go to sandboxes. Sandboxes are nothing but the copies that we have, where in which we can explore these options. In case if you have already known what exactly is a sandbox, sandbox is nothing but a copy where in which you can do, or we can use that copy for testing purposes. Like I've told you, there is an, a box that I've drawn where in which we have asked the QA team to test our changes. And there is another box that I've mentioned where in which we give demos to the client. And there is another box where in which I've told you that there is a regression that can happen, right? And there is another box that I've, developed, that I've drawn, which is for development. These all boxes are nothing but the sandboxes. Right. We have environments is what we call them. We call it as production environment and a sandbox environment. If you ask me what is the need of a sandbox, it is helping us to basically test our functionality without compromising the data and the application that we have in the production. I can do the testing. I can do the development in production also. Doing so, I would impact the business and I might also create a bugs, which I do not want to do it. And if I basically test the uh, test an application by creating a record, right? Which might of let's say an order that needs to be placed for let's say one product which is of cost uh, let's say ten thousand uh, dollars or something of that sort. A data that has been created in production is a real time data. These people would basically send out or ship that particular equipment to the end user with which we have done the testing. So that person might uh, might be thinking like I have not placed an order. Why all, all of a sudden there is a product that has been delivered to him? But it be, it becomes a chaos and the business would the customer lo would lose the trust in that particular company which has shipped this product unintentionally. Right. So that is why we do not do the testing anything in the production environment. So we do everything in sandbox. So if we have multiple sandboxes, just we have the developer uh, sandbox, developer pro partial copy and full copy sandboxes. These are the sandboxes that we use. The reason for the code migration is coming up here. So if you have multiple sandboxes here, and finally I have a production here, the changes that I do here, let's say if I'm creating a workflow, if it has to reach to production, it has to move through these many sandboxes and finally it has to reach to production, which might be a time consuming activity if I have to do it everything manually. So let's say if I have to create a workflow rule, every time when I'm moving to a next door for testing and all, it would be a manual activity. That is where we might tend to introduce some kind of a human errors or the some of other configuration might miss. So that is why we use the concept of code migration. So the, the reason why we use code migration is to basically get the metadata from one, one org and move those changes to another org. I hope code migration, the, re, the need for code migration is uh, making sense to you now. Hey guys, if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to SFTC Quest.